The benefits of blockchain technology are well known and include cost savings from increased efficiency, speed and automation. Blockchains, of course, better protect business processes with the help of cryptographic proof and higher levels of transparency. But how can existing financial infrastructure interface with and benefit from smart contracts and blockchains? Chainlink's industry-leading blockchain middleware enables banks and financial institutions to securely connect their existing back-end systems and any public or private blockchain environment so they can easily interact with their counterparties in any environment. Well, Sergei Nazarov is the co-founder of Chainlink, and I'm delighted to say that he now joins us. So, Sergei, welcome to Cybos Television. So much happening in this space. Take us through this. What are the key factors that are growing demand for digital assets, custody and DeFi? Thank you very much for, uh, for having me. I think the thing that's growing demand for our industry generally is the need to participate in this as an asset class, in digital assets and cryptocurrencies as an asset class, with completely different properties from the other asset classes that both retail and institutional users um, currently can use, right? So the first reason digital assets and custody is important is because people want access to digital assets and cryptocurrencies as a hedge or as a different asset class with different kind of speculative properties and various other properties. The, the second reason, uh, the more advanced reason, is that the returns on these assets through uh, various DeFi protocols is between anywhere from two to 8%. And so the returns are another very large uh, positive reason why more advanced um, users, even institutional users, want access to these digital assets and these cryptocurrencies is because the rate of return they can get is, is actually quite large, even counteracting much of the volatility concerns. And then the third reason is transparency and control over risk management. So you can actually see the full solvency of the protocol where your assets are. It's as if a bank backend was completely open and viewable by all of its users on a second by second basis. And so that level of transparency provides certain levels of risk management that the most advanced users of digital assets and DeFi find attractive. But I, I think it's primarily those three reasons in, in that order. How should banks and financial institutions be approaching DeFi and, and smart contracts, Sergey? I think banks and financial institutions should view custody as the beginning of their, of their journey with smart contracts and blockchains, not the beginning and the end. Because once they custody something for their user base, the user base is going to basically demand to gain a return on what they've custody. And the gaining of the return is, is actually going to be the thing that um, a lot of banks and financial institutions compete on. So if uh, an institution is doing custody or thinking about doing custody, that's just the beginning. It's actually the start of them making blockchain financial products or offering returns on what they custody at the very least. So I think the way that banks and financial institutions should relate to all of that is they should uh, make their systems and their people prepared, probably by making a separate dedicated team, as I'm seeing more and more banks doing, for the generation of DeFi and smart contract yield um, and financial products that allow whatever they custody or whatever their user base wants to get from digital assets to be serviced by them as opposed to their competitors. So I think they should just view it as an entirely new asset class that they're going to have to have a dedicated team for, which is what I'm seeing more and more banks doing now, more so than I've ever seen them do, do so before. Yeah, but Sergey, let's take this further because, yeah, upskilling is one way to actually have these dedicated teams. But what are the other limiting factors for banks adopting blockchains and these smart contracts? Sure. So I, I think there are primarily two limiting factors. One is private key security and the concerns there. Another one is uh, the ability to integrate with the many different chains, right? So as a multinational, you're going to have many different counterparties coming to you in many different environments. There's going to be derivative-specific chains, equity-specific chains, trade finance-specific chains. And then that's even going to vary based on geography. So in each geography, you might have a different flavor of those vertically-focused chains. And this means that banks will need to integrate with many different public, private, and consortium chains in order to conduct the transactions that they're used to conducting outside of them. This scope and size of integration, while keeping in mind that you need security while doing them, is, is really the problem. And that's, um, that's the problem that, that we solve. So the problem that we solve is how does a bank or any enterprise, any multinational enterprise, securely and efficiently integrate with hundreds of different chains 
with, without having additional security concerns and while being able to use their existing um, engineering um, kind of resources and their existing backend and even their existing APIs and messaging systems. So uh, I think the big limiting factor um, is integration and secure integration, which is you know what we spend a lot of time and a lot of late nights working on. And the, the only other factor is the speed at which uh, banks form these teams and speed up in their adoption of this technology, which I think is now actually gonna be driven much more by um, user demand and much less by the general efficiencies, much more by user demand, which means it's a very different situation that it, for banks. It's not about gaining some incremental efficiency like it's been over the past four or five years. It's now about servicing user demand. Well, speaking of efficiency, we are operating at lightning pace here at Cybos TV uh, today, Sergey. We'd like to search you further, but sadly, time is of the essence. But thank you so much for joining us here uh, today on our final day. Sergey Nazarov, the co-founder of Chainlink there.